Hey guys, Holistic Hilda here. I bring you experts, experiences, and epic adventures to boost your health. I'm a certified integrative nutrition health coach, a certified fitness professional, and the host and producer of the Wise Traditions podcast. Today, I'm bringing to you an amazing conversation with a beautiful person, Cindy O'Meara. Cindy is behind this huge empire in Australia and really worldwide that improves people's health. She has a nutrition academy. She has a Changing Habits, Changing Lives a website where people can go and really learn about modalities to improve their health. And she's the author of Lab to Table. You might be like, Lab to Table? I've heard of Farm to Table, but not Lab to Table. The truth is Lab to Table is most of the food we eat. It is the fact that the food that we eat is injected with additives and you know colorings and natural flavorings and all these things that really are playing with our health. And so Cindy's objective is to help us restore our health by paying attention to what the ingredients are that are in the food that we eat. So check out our conversation held in her beautiful home in Australia. Cindy, I'm so excited to talk to you because you've written Lab to Table, and I want to ask you, what was your first aha when you realized something's up with our food, they're messing with it in a way they shouldn't? Yeah, I, it was university. So I had studied anthropology, the cultures and traditions of people, and saw how they ate for millenniums. And I want to be a dietitian. I think this is great. So I'm at university doing my Bachelor of Science, majoring in nutrition, and I'm learning about margarine and low fat and prepared foods and pig feeding and nasal gastro feeding. And I'm looking at the ingredients and I'm thinking, this has nothing to do with the way we used to eat. And margarine, I think, was my first aha because it was made with partially hydrogenated vegetable oil. And in 1978, there was people talking about the dangers of trans fats. But it wasn't until 2000 plus that the public learned about it. So I was reading about it, the diglycerides, the colors, the flavors. So I can see margarine and it looks like that. But then I started to delve into the ingredient, how it was made, what's in that. And like natural flavoring, I found that at minimum it will have 48 chemicals in it. But they're still allowed to label, label it natural, yeah. even though it's just a chemical concoction. It's just a chemical concoction. And there, and there is, in Australia, yeah. there, and our industry is for SANS, that is our regulatory industry, so Food Standards Australia and New Zealand, they have no regulation around the word natural. None. I think it's the same in the US. Yeah. So people can say it's a natural flavor, but then it's not. You know, it might have one natural thing in there and the, and the other 47 are not natural. And it's the same with coloring. And it's, and it's all these new names that are coming out. They've all got patents there, intellectual properties. And when you read the patent, it's like a scientific experiment and they're putting it into our food. But I don't understand why this university is still teaching that we should eat these kind of foods. Like, how could they do that? Training the dietitians to guide people to eat these fake foods. I don't understand either. I, I, I would say it's funding. That's the only thing I can put it down to because I learned that in the 80s and I have nutrition students who come and want to work with me and um, they'll, they'll have been teaching, they've been teaching the same thing. They're still teaching the old cholesterol thing. They're still... Like I had this one young girl work for me recently and I asked to do a meal plan for me for somebody and it was an egg white omelette. Oh. I thought that went out in the 80s, yeah, you know, I, I really it. did. But she did an egg white omelette and I went, she's not learning what I thought they should be learning. So The 80s called, they want their omelette back, yeah. you know, yeah, <laughs> what yeah. the heck. Now, what do you think are the worst foods, the foods that are most tampered with, the foods that you would recommend that we avoid because they're not real at all? Yesterday you said breakfast cereal, I felt like, right? Oh, yes, I did say <laughs> breakfast cereal, yeah. So a breakfast cereal um, is, is just a wheat grain or a barley grain or whatever, corn yeah. or whatever, um, that's probably being monocultured, so it's agricultural practices are probably not good, so there's probably chemicals in it, so that's a start. But then they take out all the goodness, all the goodness, but then they have to add back the nutrients. So they put in synthetic vitamins and, and mined minerals, but then it tastes revolting, so they have to add a flavor. And then it has no color, so they add a color to it. 
And then now they're putting rosemary extract in it, which is just another name for an antioxidant that's synthetically made. And, and then they'll put a vegetable powder. And that was my first clue is that I was looking at the breakfast cereal about probably 10 years ago and I went, why are they putting rosemary extract in there? What is rosemary extract? Because they wouldn't put anything in that's good. <laughs> that's the way I saw it. Um, and then I went on a bit of a journey with rosemary extract and found the patent and read what they do and how they make it and that they they call it rosemary extract because nobody wants numbers anymore. They don't want the numbering system anymore. I see. So they don't want to see red dye number five no, on the package. No, they want to see. Uh, maybe beta carotene or turmeric or it'll be curcumin but curcumin is made synthetically 70 percent of the curcumin out there on the market today is synthetically made and that's the extract of turmeric um, and beta carotene is also made synthetically it's not extracted from food they figured out how to make it and consequently <laughs> we might think we're eating a healthy food when it says clean ingredients or natural on the package even healthy foods and now, correct me if I'm wrong, I think your husband told me that some corporations think, okay, we've got the cleanest product ever, but when, they, when you start delving in, mm -hmm. as you're consulting with them, you're realizing they need to be made aware that this is not the true deal. Yeah. What happens is that, you know, I can blame the food manufacturers, mm -hmm. but it's not them. I think they're there to make a product that's good and cheap. And they make it cheaply because they want you know, money for either their shareholders or for their, the people that, that work for them. So they have to make a profit. So they have no idea about food. They're not a nutritionist. Mm -hmm. So they hire a food chemist. So a food chemist understands that if I put this flavor in and this color in and I put an acidity regulator in and I do this, then we can make a f this thing that we're feeding the public look like food, taste like food and smell like food but it isn't food. So the company that my husband's talking about, they sent me the ingredients of their cookie um, and they were really proud of their cookie. <laughs> and I looked at it and I just said, well, you could put those 100 ingredients into five. It's just flour, sugar, eggs, um, and chocolate chip cookies. They had, I think it was chocolate chip <laughs> um, and butter. But they had um, definitely, I don't even think flour was their first ingredient. Oh, the chocolate chip was. Um, but the chocolate chip was made with 10 ingredients with um, lecithin and a flavor and a color mm -hmm. and and then probably white sugar and i went well why can't you just use a chocolate chip that's got two ingredients which is the cacao and rapidura sugar uh -huh. why can't we do that and then margarine was the next ingredient and then of course there's 15 other ingredients under margarine such as vegetable oils but there could be a mix of fine vegetable oils and they could be soya and canola and cotton seed and and then um, after that, there was diglycerides and a flavor and a color. And then they had an emulsifier instead of an egg. And, and you taste the cookie. Like I can taste it and I can't stand it. Oh, you can tell the Oh, difference. I know. If you put two cookies in front of me and they look the same, I'll taste them and I'll know. Because I've just, I don't eat that stuff. And it, but if you're eating that all the time, your taste buds are very excited. Um, and you need things that will excite them and the flavors have a way of exciting them. And but let's say uh, we eat them either unwittingly or we think, what's the big deal about lecithin or these uh, emulsifiers? Like, why are you so passionate about making sure we know what's in our food? Oh, uh, you know, I've been doing it for four decades. In the 80s, I took people off breakfast cereals, I took them off lean cuisine, healthy choice, whatever, and put them on a real food diet just all real food, and you would see miracles happen. Mm. And now what I'm seeing is that I'm not even getting them well. So we have a sicker society. Yeah. I have to go to an extreme diet in order to get them well. And that might be eliminating so many foods to just so that they can tolerate, heal their gut, heal the microbiome, and then we can start to introduce those, introduce those foods into it. So I think we're, Generationally, our microbiome is eroding. Agricultural-wise, we're using a product that's an antibiotic that is decimating us and it's in all of our foods. So, which product is that? Glyphosate. Ah, yeah, glyphosate. We'll round up oil. In Australia, we have 596 registered um, glyphosate-containing products. No way. And it's used everywhere in Australia. Like most of Australia is being sprayed with it. 
And our bodies react to it as if it were an antibiotic. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Uh, and a lot of other ways as well. So it will, um, you know, it will take minerals out of our system. It stops the shikimate pathway, which produces our tyrosine, tryptophan, phenylalanine, folic acid, enterobacter, now iron carrier, coenzyme Qs. So we're, we're slowly losing the ability to make the things that help us think, to, to create health in our body. And when you compound that with all of these other additives, and there are three and a half thousand flavors out there that I know of. Three and a half thousand. Three and a half thousand. Yeah. And none of them are real because, it, you know, international flavors and fragrances, they have a monopoly on it. And they, you know, they do fragrance and they do flavor. And now they're calling natural flavor a natural aroma. Uh -huh. So you kind of go, well, what's a natural aroma? You know? Just relabeling to add to the confusion. Yep. So the main thing for us to do is to pay attention to the ingredients in our food or look for one ingredient foods, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm one person who, and there's a lot of people that believe this, but I'm someone who has always believed this, is I have the one ingredient pantry. And the one ingredient pantry is that in my pantry, I have lots of one ingredients. So I have my nuts and my seeds and my salts and my spices and my herbs. And then my fridge has all my fruits and my vegetables and my dairy and, and all of those. So but they're always one ingredient. And then from there, I can make a thousand foods, different foods. I can ferment my foods. And people are probably thinking, oh, come on, that's too hard. I can't do that. And I kind of go, well, if you don't take the time for your health right now, then you're going to have to take a lot of time later for illness. And the statistics go that the last 15 years of our life, we're on medications, we live a less than optimal life, um, and we live with a major chronic disease in our last 15 years of life. So if you're going to live to 75 from 60, which is my age, mm -hmm. so for the next 15 years, I'm going to be chronically ill, and then I'm going to die? No way. <laughs> no you know? way to go. No way, you know? <laughs> So what I do is I do the best for my body. And by me doing the best for my body, then I'm powerful as an activist because I'm not purchasing those foods that are made by chemical companies that fool the food industry to use them because they're cheap ingredients that then feed the population that is now costing our government and your government, well, your government has gone broke with healthcare. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So we're still a socialist healthcare government, but... Um, and people get free health care, but it's, it, it's not going to be for much longer because people are so sick that we're going broke as a result of that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, billions of dollars are being spent. So the idea is to take our health back into our own hands by eating one ingredient foods or making a mix of things with those one ingredient mm. <laughs> pieces. And she just made me the most amazing breakfast <laughs> with all these solitary ingredients. Tell them what you made me because it was fantastic. Um, I made you just a little egg, like a little egg dish, I guess it was, and I put it in a little patty. So I fried up some garlic and some onion, put that in the bottom, grated some zucchini, then I put some fresh herbs from my farm into that, so I put some thyme and some rosemary into that, then whipped up the eggs from my chickens. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and this is the extreme, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. because I'm pa so passionate about oh, it. Absolutely. And then I put some salt and pepper in there, so organic, always. My salt was Himalayan with seaweed in it, mm. so you got some iodine. Wow. Um, and then I just put it in the oven, it took like 10 minutes. And then I cut up some sweet potato and some pumpkin and I laid some prosciutto on it that's only cured with salt, nothing else, no nitrates. It's an amazing prosciutto. Yes. So I laid that over, put that in the oven. Then I made you some pesto and mayonnaise that I'd made yesterday. So all and from a little avocado yeah, on the side. On avocado. Everything <laughs> super fresh from her farm or locally sourced. She knows the sources of her ingredients and yeah. her food. And it's just, it shows in your vibrancy and energy. Thank you so much for joining with us. Oh, thank you, Hilda. I love what you are doing too. It's oh, incredible. It's so <laughs> fun. Thanks for watching, you guys. And I want to let you know about two special things coming up. One, I am doing a challenge this month, January 12th to the 19th, called Sunshine and Shivers. My purpose is just to help everybody get a little bit more sunshine and I'll explain the science behind why that's important and the benefits you'll get from it and a little bit more time in the cold, cold adapting. So every day I'm going to offer during that challenge 
little tips and tricks that you can do to start implementing some of these really natural hacks to improve your health. I'm telling you, if you change nothing in this new year for your diet or your exercise regimen, you will still feel the benefits of applying these hacks of sunshine and shivers to your life. So click on the link below so that you can do this challenge with me. And everybody who participates has an entry to win two blue blocking glasses, daytime and nighttime, and a pair of air tube earbuds from my friend Thaddeus Tomorrow. These are amazing so you don't get all the waves coming into your head from your devices that you're listening to. And the other thing I wanted to tell you about, sorry I got a little long-winded there, is this trip to Ecuador. You guys, I have never taken anybody with me on my adventures, and this time I am. So we're gonna go to amazing Ecuador. We're going to explore natural beauty. We're going to eat traditional foods. We're gonna engage with one another and apply some healthy living hacks. We're gonna jump into waterfalls and catch the morning sunrise. It's gonna be epic, the truth be told, and I want you to come with me. We've extended the special early bird pricing through the end of January. So please sign up now because space is limited. There's only room for 12 people and people are starting to sign up now. So join me, won't you, in Ecuador. And I look forward to being with you. Don't forget all the things here on this channel. Click on the little notification bell so you can know when a new video is uploaded and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Thanks and I'll talk to you soon.